I was born into a family that had considerable wealth, but it all vanished, literally went to zero uh, by about 1932 or 1933. So we were on our own and uh, we had to make do with what we could. We had to begin as we got a little bit older had to earn what we, if you wanted something, you went out and earned the money to get it. And uh, we lived with our grandparents for a few years. That was not atypical of those depression years. And uh, so I tell people I grew up in the most ideal possible way, as without any money, but with a certain standing in the community as a result of our family background. And uh, that's really, a, a, it's perfect. Uh, once you learn to take responsibility early, you have to, you don't have any choice, not some magical thing. Uh, and uh, stand up for yourself, uh, knowing if you want something, you've got to work for it knowing you've got to contribute to the family exchequer. And so you start working when you're eight or nine, delivering newspapers and magazines, and then you become a waiter, uh, which was my prime occupation for many, many years, and I loved it. Uh, I was a waiter at Blair Academy. We worked our way, we Vogel kids, through Blair Academy, won scholarships and jobs, and uh, only one of us could go to college. There wasn't any, any resources at all. And I was the one that could get the scholarships and the jobs, which is uh, how I ended up at Princeton University. So uh, I grew up and, and I, I, I was always kind of a dreamer, living a little bit in my own world, not necessarily a great thing for people to do, but very introverted and uh, kind of mentally insulated from the problems that our family was facing in terms of done for debt collection and all that and moving from one place to another Often, I think we moved so often in one, at one point because we never paid the final month's rent the previous year. So, uh, and I'm pretty sure that's true. And along that way, I had one of the transforming experiences of my life uh, when I was a pin setter in a bowling alley. And after about six hours of that back-breaking work every day for probably half a summer, uh, I came to the transforming conclusion that this is not what I wanted to do for a lifetime. And um, I'd always been interested in finance uh, and uh, and money kind of thing, banking, I thought I would go into. And so my background was, you know, almost shaped me for where I am today. Sure. And uh, it shaped the values of this company, uh, the values of Vanguard, a company I created in 1974 out of a corporate mess. Uh, which are, in a sense, the old Quaker values of simplicity and thrift. And that's the, that, uh, I'm not a Quaker, but that's the life we lived, simplicity. Uh, it was easy for me to understand what was going on, and thrift, because we had to have it. And the Vanguard, you could say, and when you look at indexing, and it, it's, it's certainly simplicity. When you look at thrift, we created what is still the only mutual organization, mutual financial organization, mutual company owned by the fund shareholders and not some outside manager in the world. And it's been a, a quite a success story, I think, if you believe that growing assets is success. I'm not sure it is. I don't even like to use the word success. But if you believe that's success, uh, it comes really from those two things, simplicity and thrift.